Good morning. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Continuing on page 82, let us pray the Venite together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Please join me in reading the Psalter in unison. Today, it comes from Psalm 133, and it can be found in your bulletin that's attached to this email. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the hand that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the Drew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For those the Lord ordered the blessing ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Thanks be to God. The first reading from the Old Testament comes from Isaiah 56, 1 and 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants. All who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted at, on my altar. For my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcast of Israel. I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the Canticle 9, found on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, Ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is holy, is the holy one of Israel. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading can be found in Romans 11, 1 through 2, 29 through 32. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they now have been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray Canticle 21, the Te Deum, found on page 95. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father, when you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the peace of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The word of the Lord. And now our third reading, the gospel, comes from Matthew. Matthew 15, 10 through 20, and 21 through 28. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know what the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. And then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes in, out into the sewer, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is to tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to the children's food and throw it to the dogs. He, she said, she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's tables. 
Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of the Lord. The homily today is titled From Isaiah to the Psalms, and it was uh, first preached by Harry Denman on August 14th, 2005. From Isaiah to the Psalms to Paul's letter to the Romans and in Matthew's gospel, we hear the offering of mercy to God's children. John Wesley, always an Anglican, whose evangelical preaching led to the founding of the Methodist Church emphasized that Christians should show their actions in word and deed. He was emphatic that believers needed to experience the mercy of God, the forgiveness of their sins, the healing of their bodies and of their minds and spirits as they were building their faithfulness. Wesley believed that Christians are on a journey of growing in God's grace. Our lessons echo for us that same journey of faith building. Our faith in God and the love for Christ Jesus. The Isaiah lesson is the beginning of what is known as the third Isaiah. In it, the Lord challenges his listeners to maintain justice, to do what is right. The Lord went on to say, soon my salvation will come. I will bring some to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. We are called to be vessels of God's justice. We are called to feel the struggles that cause conflict, to sense the need of reconciliation between those who have wronged each other. As people of faith, we need the vision to understand the Lord when we hear him in the depths of our soul saying, do what is right. The psalmist says, may God be merciful to us and bless us. A beautiful psalm from the heart of David. It is a song of praise, an expression of great joy, a prayer of thanksgiving. The worst sinner and the best saint can merit God's merciful blessing. The church universal begs for a blessing from God. Bless us, we pray, in our quest for acceptance. When we bless God, our words do little. But when God blesses us, he enriches our lives. He fills our hearts with compassion for others. He opens us to see the goodness to which we had been blinded. The psalmist, in closing, asks that God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. In the scripture from Romans, just preceding today's reading, Paul is frustrated because the Jews have failed to recognize the Messiah. In our lesson, he changes course. Now I am speaking to you, Gentiles, says Paul. He is even bold enough to give himself a title, apostle to the Gentiles. Paul is not bashful about his zeal for Jesus. He chides the Gentiles about being presumptuous because they have accepted Christ and the Israelites have not. As a Jew, but one who sees Jesus as his Messiah, Paul says, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. Israel's rejection of the gospel, as Paul declares it, has led to the reconciliation of the Gentiles and beyond them to the whole world as they knew it. Paul sees the acceptance of Jesus through baptism as the reality of finding new life after death. They die with Christ but rise again with him. Paul finds that the disobedience to God, the Gentiles earlier declared, and the disbelief of the Jews are changed through the mercy and calling of God. God, through God's grace, touches the hearts of those who rebel and battle against God. God can do the same for us when we lose sight of God. Jacob Krieger wrote a wonderful contemporary song that has as its first line, I heard the Lord call my name. Listen close, you all. You'll hear the same. Indeed, we will. God is always there. But do we have listening ears? The poor Canaanite woman, she's an outcast, not only from the Jews, but even from the Gentiles. At first, even Jesus resists her boldness. 
This little quirk of scripture shows even the humanness of Jesus. Was he tired from moving from city to city and did not want to be bothered? Did he have more important things on his mind, like knowing the agony of death he would soon face? Who knows but him? All the Canaanite woman was asking was to receive the gifts of God for the people of God. She persisted, and at last, Jesus praises her for her great faith and heals her daughter. The dialogue between the woman and Jesus reflects her own self-inflicted spiritual dialogue when we jump ahead of what God's Holy Spirit often says to us. We need to have ears that hear, not ears that itch. Jesus said to her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. But ignoring his remarks, she says, Lord, help me. After Jesus comments about throwing food to the dogs, the determined woman challenges him once again. Then Jesus answers her, Woman, great is your faith. Let be done for you as you wish. Scripture says, and her daughter was healed immediately. Why is it that the poor and the outcast are so often the ones who recognize Jesus? The vast majority of our ancestors, slaves or free, that landed on the shores of an uncertain land were either poor or outcast. Yet they brought with them a personal faith. They sensed the grace of God that guided them across stormy seas and gave them stamina to withstand the brutality of chains and unruly ship captains. It has been said that if they had less to lose in the eyes of others, then Jesus' message of acceptance was a welcome mat for hope in the future. The Canaanite woman would not accept the idea that Jesus was only sent for certain people. Her faith melted that barrier. It calls all of us to receive what Jesus has to offer. Our collect for today says, Give us grace to receive, thankfully, the fruits of his redeeming work, and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. His redeeming work is poured out for the likes of us, warts and all. This Sunday, the Sunday before this homily was written, the Archdiocese of the Roman Catholic Church in St. Louis began closing more than 20 parishes because of the lack of priests and in the changes of demographics where the par parishioners lived. In St. Boniface Parish, the priest placed a small clay pot with one white flower in it on the altar rail, as he concluded reminiscing on the life of the 140-year congregation. He picked up the potted flower, followed a crucifer down the center aisle of the church doors, and made the sign of the cross before he slammed the pot to the floor. As an overflow crowd looked on in astonishment, the priest then scooped up the sod, placed it in another pot with a little white flower, handed it to a small girl, and said, follow her and the flower she carries. They reflect the life of this parish. It is still alive. God is a healer and he will hear your, heal your hurt that you feel today, the anger that you carry, and the uncertainty that has anchored your faith through generations in this place. The standing room only communicants for the last time met at the Lord's table, broke bread, and fed each in his name. To the people of this parish, their pain was every bit as much as the Canaanite woman's pain. Yet they will be healed as God calls them to new ministries. Many of our Episcopal congregations are struggling for a variety of reasons. Change is difficult. Theology, social issues, economics, and demographics haunt our parishes. We must not lose sight of what Paul wrote in his second letter to Timothy regarding the need to be in the presence of Christ Jesus proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage. Do the work of an evangelist. Carry out your ministry fully. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 2, 8. We need to steady the course, to look outside the front doors of our parishes and see the people who do not have a church home or may never have been introduced to Jesus and invite them in. Be a good neighbor, share the faith. We are the seeds of that faith. God will provide the richness of God's Holy Spirit to guide us if we but show our actions in word and deed. When we are in need of God's grace, cry out to God, listen close. 
God will call your name. Be ready to respond. Be prepared for a miracle. Remember to meet Jesus at the altar and to feel the presence of being in a house of prayer for all peoples, the Jews, the Gentiles, the Canaanite woman, and you and me. Take the gifts of God for the people of God. Touch lives with the mercy given by God. His mercy is great. May the Lord bless you with his grace this day and forever. Amen. We will now pray the Apostles' Creed found on page 96. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer on page 97. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we will pray Suffrages A on the bottom of page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for the church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our suffragan bishop, and Bob, our assisting bishop the wardens, vestry, and lay leaders of Vauders Church. We pray for our elected officials, Donald, our president, Mark and Tim, our senators, Rob, our congressman, Ralph, our governor, Ryan, our state senator, and Keith, our delegate. We pray for the cares and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially Patrick, Lillian, Marlene, Debbie, Kristen, Gazelle, Christy, Warren, Jack, Johanna, Irma, Regis, Susan, Madeline, Martha Ann, Andy, and Mason. Let us pray together the general thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, 
for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be there also in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you next week.